Dr. Mary DeGroot, ADA President of Healthcare and Education, is here with me now. You're about halfway through your presidency. Tell me, how are things going so far? I think the most remarkable part of this year for me, as well as all of us worldwide, has been the COVID-19 pandemic. I've been so proud to work with ADA to disseminate quality information about the impact of COVID-19 for people with diabetes and to give voice to the emotional and behavioral aspects of coping with this worldwide experience. What are some of the achievements you are most proud of in your time as president? Well, I'm very proud to be working with Tracy Brown, CEO of ADA, our board of directors, and all of our incredibly dedicated staff nationwide in coping with not only COVID-19, but advancing um, the, the experience of diabetes. We have made great gains in terms of advocacy, um, as well as programs to be able to make life easier for people with diabetes, as well as to reduce the risk of diabetes through the Diabetes Prevention Program. So I'm delighted to support all of those efforts as we move forward. Let's talk about what some of the current challenges are in healthcare and education regarding ADA that you hope to address. At ADA, we have been working at multiple dimensions, both programmatically and in terms of advocacy. I'm particularly proud of the mental health provider training program that has provided training to community mental health providers, psychologists, social workers, and other allied health providers to more than 450 individuals nationwide. We also have the ADA mental health provider directory for those people who have completed this training program that's a partnership with the American Psychological Association so that people in communities, whether they're patients or healthcare providers, can find these trained people. And I'm delighted that we're expanding this program so that everyone can have access to it over time. Can you give us a quick overview of your talk? Well, I'm just delighted today to be able to address the professional membership who will be attending our first virtual scientific sessions. My talk really gives a description of the first 50 years of behavioral science in diabetes in the modern era. I'm delighted to be able to share how we've progressed from from our initial clinical impressions to the development and implementation of wide-scale interventions. And I'm delighted to talk about that in the context of the future of the next 50 years of behavioral science and diabetes. Why is this topic so important in the field? Well, as I outline in the lecture, we, behavioral science 50 years ago was in its infancy. But over those 50 years and more than three generations of diabetes professionals and behavioral researchers have amassed a body of literature now that clearly notes that behavior is fundamental to everything we do in diabetes. And so it's really important that we honor this benchmark year, this 50th golden anniversary, if you will, uh, but even more so, to, as we look forward to the future, to, to recognize that behavior is the equal partner to all of the other innovations that we do. It is the bedrock on which public health is located and that diabetes is located. Why is this topic so important for your ADA audience? Well, this is not an unfamiliar topic, actually, to the ADA audience, because anyone who has ever worked in or around diabetes knows that behavior is fundamental to everything that we do. So this is really an opportunity for us to celebrate, celebrate all of the accomplishments that we've made thus far, but not to settle on our laurels, um, to really use what we have learned and move this forward and as we look ahead to the 100th anniversary of insulin next year, knowing that it's behavior that is the foundation of, for all of our advancements, both in the past and also into the future. Dr. Mary DeGroote, thank you so much. Thanks, Dina. It's a pleasure to be here.